Right now, I'm in Grindstone, Pennsylvania. Is that the best town name ever? I'm in Grindstone, Pennsylvania at Colonial Campus School. This is a special education place. It's actually half special education and half alternative education. And they have a Fab Lab Maker Space inside as well as a special one outside. And I'm going to check it out. This is great. Wow. All right, so tell me, tell me about this space. This is, tell me about how this came into being. With the Chevron Foundation, with the Chevron people, okay, uh, knowing the, the importance of Fab Labs, they gave us a grant uh, to develop this. And the setting that you have right now is an alternative school, special ed setting. Right. And what kind of stuff are the kids working on in here? I see some 3D printers, I see some laser cutters, I see some CNC routers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll see some vinyl cutters and some things in the back, some soldering machines. But basically what we do is we try to have our students stationed. We do have a fab manager. We have two teachers mm -hmm. that uh, work in the fab a lab on a daily basis here at Colonial. And it's a class that kids can take every day? Yes. Okay. So we have students in this lab every day. So we reach out to uh, different groups, groups of students on a scheduled basis. They're in here working ongoing on projects. Okay. Um, and, and there's a lot of prep work that needs to take place. So students just don't come in here and obviously start to work, although they want to when they see a lot of these things. Yeah. So our teachers and our fab manager, Mr. Prentice, do a great job in getting these students acclimated to these um, this types of machinery. And then what we, what the really nice thing is that we see these older students that teach our younger students as well with this. Um, so they're paying it forward a little bit. Yes. And we involve our students too um, somewhat in our professional development with teachers. So when we bring teachers, we're an educational service agency, we bring teachers in, we want them, our students to be able to speak fluently about the work that they're doing in the Fab Lab. Now this, this school is, is half uh, special ed and alternative ed. Are you finding... Um, this is, and it's a relatively new program. It's about a year old, am I right? Yes. Are you finding uh, uh, positive results about the students' engagement with the, with the work here in the lab? We collect metrics ongoing um, with uh, Chevron and with the Fab Foundation. We have um, you know, periodic meetings. We, we discuss this. But I can tell you that automatically um, we saw attendance rise in this building and we saw discipline. Behavior, yeah. Behavior has decreased. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Kids, are, kids are engaged. Kids are Just hands on. Just within the last year. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Absolutely. That's, that's an immediate and amazingly positive result. Yeah, on the, on, on the alternative education side, these are kids that uh, don't learn traditionally. School districts, you know, send them to us, okay, and we've had great results. Can you show me some of the projects that the kids are working on? Absolutely. Certainly. Absolutely. We're going to introduce you to our FAB manager right okay. now, Mr. Prentice. So this is Brandon Prentice, and maybe you can explain a little bit on what the students are working on. Uh, right now, what we have the kids doing is they are, we kind of divide them up a little bit. So we have some kids soldering a circuit board to amplifier chip. So simple, um, just a speaker project basically, okay. five watt speaker. And uh, we have some kids soldering back there in our soldering station. Yeah. And the assembly area where they're putting it all together is over here. Now wait a second, they're putting, a, I see Mythbusters on yeah. the speaker. <laughs> you guys put together a speaker for my visit? Yes, yes sir. Actually. Um, yep. Can we talk about this? Yeah. This is awesome. Show them, tell them the process. How many times is going on here? That's uh, Alize and Mercedes right Well, there. first hello. we had hello. to design nice it to on the, hello. Hi. Uh, we have to design it on here first. Okay. And we just pulled some stuff off the internet. Maybe see what probably look good on here. Tab and slot, cut acrylic. Okay. Yep. And uh, we printed it out. It engraved your tested logo, Dude. your T's, uh, the Chevron <laughs> intermediate <laughs> unit, and Fab Lab. Brilliant. And then we put our name, our signature names and Mythbusters on it. Wait, wait a minute, so this is a speaker I'll be able to actually plug my, yes, my, my phone yep. into. You know, I, yeah. I left on this trip without a speaker, mm -hmm. so I actually needed this. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. We're still working on putting this one in and screwing these All right, in the back. And I'm going to get out of your way and let you work and go visit the solder station. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. So yes. this is our electronics workbench. Hello. Uh, yeah. This is Zach right here. Hi, Zach. Um, so what he's doing right now is using this kit we have. He's going piece by piece, putting all the components onto the circuit board. Okay. And uh, right now he's putting the actual uh, chip into it. Well, so come in and get some close-up of solder. I find it so satisfying when you're in the groove doing this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. What, what, uh, oh, oh so yeah, this is like our this is our miniature milling machine. So. Oh, that's right. This, so this is milling wax. That's yeah, what this machine, is. Yeah, 
So either it's foam or the wax. Mm -hmm. And actually right now in the Fab Academy course I'm taking through the Fab Foundation, they're yeah. teaching me right now how to design. Oh, do circuit boards yeah, on this. Design, right. cut out, and program on here. This is really cool. Okay, so this is copper coated uh, uh, fiberglass and it, you can make a circuit board by just milling away the copper lines that you don't need and leaving the ones that you do. So you can make integrated circuits with a milling machine. Yeah, that is totally exactly. awesome. Yeah, and all of our components, I mean, the Fab Foundation gave us any and everything we needed for all these different surface mounting pieces and over in those bins over there. And so are you doing, is this soldering that you're doing or is it yeah, the baking? That's, so we, I've been, that's me being very patient. Dude! I know, it's, uh, I went cross-eyed a little bit at first yeah, doing that. Yeah, I can that. imagine. Yeah. Woo. So, okay, look at how, check, you want to zoom in and see that very sensitive soldering work with finger for scale. Well done. So it sounds like you're kind of learning the system at the same time as the kids are learning. I was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been in education for a couple of years now, and um, something more precise like this, uh, yeah, I've been learning a lot more on. Yeah. yeah. Let's see some more. Yeah. Two ladies over there are 3D printing, 3D modeling. What are you guys making right now? Well, um, since Lexi really doesn't know what she's doing, I'm teaching her how to build a house. Like I always build. But you're teaching her how to make a house. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well start small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta start planning ahead for your future. For sure. I, I have, I've ended up drawing every apartment I've ever lived in in SketchUp. Seriously? Yeah. Because it's really fun. Just go around with a tape measure and measure the rooms and then you can build your house in SketchUp. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that hard. Oh, you totally got to do it. Try it. The gentleman who made you the uh, 3D printed object. Yes. Number one Mythbusters, Dakota. Yes. He's over there making his own little thing too on SketchUp. Dakota, you printed this for me? Yes, I did. I wanted to make it like my old one that I made before, yeah. where it made it 3D, where it comes out a little bit. That's great. And before, this wasn't here, mm -hmm. so now you can just hang it up. I can't wait. That looks great. Thank you so much. That looks awesome. You've got a, oh my goodness, you've got an embroidery machine too. Yeah. yeah. Just you were mentioning about how I was learning new stuff in this lab. I'd say the one machine that I needed the most knowledge of was sewing. So I haven't sewed since the uh, seventh grade actually. So this is a nice machine to actually get yeah. familiar with. So, And this is, you can input your own designs into this? Exactly. Just like a 3D printer is, it's, I found out it's super similar where you have to just design whatever you want from the computer using the software that comes with it. And then from there, it's just how to do the machine setup. That was the part I really need to learn is how to do, use the actual sewing machines. Right, right. But it's importing the same kind of files, same process. And it can, it can, it's not because I looked at, and this is a total aside, but I looked at embroidery machines a couple of years ago and they were all really proprietary about what you could put into the machine. I gotta take a picture of this. That's cool. Yeah. So now I'm outside the school in another fab lab that's actually mobile. And this is really mobile in every sense of the word. You guys actually drive this place, right? Yeah, so we go from festivals to school districts to any kind of community events. I mean, we'll go anywhere. And so when you do community events, you're also bringing people in and letting them learn how to use these machines? Yeah, we'll have little tutorials on how to use the machines, like here's some sample projects, let's make it together kind of thing. Yeah. And it looks to me like everything in here was built by the the machines that are in here for the most part. Yeah, for the most part, yes. You can see all this stuff was pressure fitted and made from our large CNC uh, milling machine, like the one in the back of the trailer. Yeah. So. And this is much of the same functionality as the shop inside? Yeah, this has all the exact same equipment as our stationary lab. 3D printers. Yeah, same 3D printers. We have two laser cutters as opposed to one, which is, in my opinion, a lot more convenient. These are laser cutters? Wait. Oh, so these are the filtration systems. Oh, right. The these cutters. are the laser cutters. Got it. Okay. So we have right. an option. We have a blower, or we can do the filters. If there's no windows in the school building or something, we'll use. I see. Yeah. So um, you have two laser cutters, and then I see a vinyl cutter, and back there I see a smaller shop bot. Yeah, two foot by four foot cutting area rather than a four foot by eight foot like you saw in another lab. It's but it's all the functionality. They're just it's a little bit smaller. Thing. Yep. And we have 18 laptops that come in those totes, and these laptops are plug and go. All the drivers for every machine are on on just ready to go for you. And as I introduced these two students from inside, Connor and Thomas, they were making the LED night lights. So they were finishing up and we were gonna cut this scrap piece of acrylic on a laser cutter. And at the same time, I told them they could make some uh, vinyl stickers. So using the same software, right. 
um, Corel Draw, they are making a customized uh, vinyl sticker to be printed off. It's very, very cool. Don, that is amazing. Well, I'm glad you think so, Adam. We were really proud of it, believe I, me. I love the fact that you're taking what you've learned inside and actually taking it not only outside, but taking it everywhere and bringing it to other schools and districts yes, and people. Is. Believe it or not, this is our uh, most common initiative here, most popular initiative at IU1. Um, and every day that we see this Fab Lab sitting in our parking lot is a day that I get really upset. And <laughs> I get upset because it's not being used by students, so we get it everywhere we can. That's and I, you saw the inside, and mm -hmm. I'd really like to show you the outside because there's really a story behind this. Okay. Um, so when we got this from the gracious efforts of Chevron, it was just a white um, trailer. Yeah. And so now when you look at this and the color to it and all of the um, the bells and whistles, this these uh, patterns were designed by our students here at IU1. So we operate four campus schools, four sides of the lab. We had a contest. We had students that had uh, really, really worked hard. Um, and so they came up with this. So the dream it, design it, make it. I'd really like to take credit for that. Yeah. But that was through our students and through their efforts. Um, we do have uh, a person who uh, kind of helped them along the way in terms of the color schemes, yeah. but this was totally student-centered. When you think about makerspaces and you hear about people 3D printing stuff, you think it's on a small scale. And what you guys are showing with the, mur with the, 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 the murals you've got and the, the sides of these is that it's architectural. You can make spaces the kids are, inhabit, and that's a much bigger deal than something small that you make with your hands. It's, it's, it's part of their everyday environment. It really is. And, and, and I'll tell you, the one thing that we're doing right now is we just have a push to just show up in place, places. So yeah. um, just different businesses, different fairs, different uh, community events, light up nights coming up soon for a lot of communities. So what our mission here is with the lab um, it's, it's like the old bookmobiles, if you yeah, remember those yeah, years ago, totally. when we were excited as kids to go to the bookmobiles, we just want to show up in a community and we want kids and families to be excited and get that exposure so that they're doing this and, and they've really received it well. And then you've got things where uh, other schools get interested in having the same thing and you have a playbook you can share with them and talk to them about how to put that into their curriculum? We do and I'll tell you, we've had some districts, what we found out is some districts are really ahead of the curve. Um, it's really helped us in learning what districts are doing, so it's a really complementary approach within our 25 districts because they're all over the place. Right. Some districts are leading the charge, others are just starting out, some are in the middle. Uh, but regardless, when we leave a district, um, we've left an impact. We'd like to think we've left an impact on that district, and they've certainly left an impact on us and have really taught us how to do our jobs better. It's really paid off in many ways. You know, one of the, a lot of the things that people talk about as difficulties in education can be summed up by institutional inertia. It's not that people are trying to stand in the way of things, but institutions have their ways of doing things. And this is a brand new way of doing things. Um, do you guys, what would you say to a school superintendent or a principal who doesn't know about this and doesn't understand its value? What is your, what is your elevator pitch of why they need it in their space? I would say that education has really, really reformed itself, particularly um, you know, across our country. Um, and so when we look at this, when we look at the research that's out there, um, we have, and just in this area alone, we have thousands of jobs that are unfilled right now because we're not preparing our students for the future. Um, and so when we look at this, um, our emphasis um, is that we need to get these students working. Um, you know, college isn't for everyone. Um, it, it, it's, it's great, and some students want to go there, and, yeah. but college isn't for everyone. There, we've seen increases in our trade schools, um, apprenticeship programs, working with different businesses. So if I'm a superintendent or if I'm a, I'm a district leader, I'm going to want my students to get their hands on this. Mm -hmm. And the one thing about this learning is you can't, it can't be institutionalized. It's just um, You can't have someone who's just one person who's leading those forces. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. It is not. And we learn in many ways, if you talk to anyone here, at our school, uh, we talk about this often. We learn a lot from our kids. Our kids come back to us, and that's a really cool thing. As and a you're making it obvious to the kids that you're learning from them. Absolutely. There's nothing more empowering than that. No. And they teach teachers. So yeah. they're teaching us, they're teaching adults, and that really shows a sense of worth, particularly with these students that are coming in that have had some problems along the way and some baggage. So kids are coming in, they're getting their self-esteem back on track again, yeah. and it's just all meshing with them. That's so. Great. We like to think they left a lot better than when they came. Don, thank you so much. It's very Thanks inspirational so much for what you guys out. have done. Thank you so Brilliant. much.